welcome everyone to another episode of the Adeptus Ridiculous Podcast. My name's DK Diamantes, my co-host is Bricky, he's got all the ridiculous info on 40k that we're going to learn about today, but before we do, if you enjoyed today's episode, please consider supporting us at patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous. We have HD posters for the tiers that are $15 and higher, you get access for the Discord, which has a bunch of cool new Doge Van Dyer emotes. Huh? And when we hit 15k, we are going to do an episode on the Demon Kilbasa. We are, I believe, as of today, $500 away on Patreon from that, so we're really close. Anyway, um, patreon.com slash ridiculous and Bricky, tell them about the merch and the book club. Well, there's an Orchid8.com merch, pretty good merch. Get yourself hoodies, shirts, stickers, etc. Lots of good merch there. And uh, mm-hmm. also Book Club, if you didn't already watch the episode on <coughs> Caiaphas oh, Cain. disgusting. Sorry, I was dying mid-sentence, uh, just like Caiaphas wants to. Caiaphas <laughs> Cain, currently in uh, the last episode we did, we are now reading the Twice Dead King, which is a Necron book. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we'll be getting on reading on that one. Also, I am still upset that we added a head pat emote the Doge Van Dyer <laughs> emote section. It's great. What do you? It's so cute. He's such a good boy. He's such a good boy. Did you have that? He's a foot fetisher. Well, nobody's perfect. <laughs> also, so. if if you are a member on YouTube as well, you can use those in the chat. So mm-hmm. that is also part of the enjoyment. When we stream on the weekends, ish. Saturday. Y- yes. Sometimes. Friday. Oh, uh, real quick, it's called Twice Dead King colon Ruin, specifically, like R-U-I-M, because there's another oh. Twice Dead King book apparently coming out soon, and it's, yeah, Sick. You know, it's gonna be a trilogy, literally a second book coming out. Yo, mm. you listen, listen, man. <laughs> <They're>, did you... <laughs> Don't you have a quote for me or something? I do. I God. do have a quote. Do your job. I do have your quote. Okay. <clears throat> you have suffered. I know this. You have come to the abyss and almost surrendered yourselves to it. That changes now. I am father, general, lord, and mentor. I shall teach you if I can and pass on the knowledge I have gained. Honor, self-sacrifice, self-reliance, brotherhood. Let this be the first lesson oh no this is at first i thought it was chaos because it it, it sounded a little chaosy but now it's like now it kind of seems uh loyalist like a loyalist space marine chapter um ba 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 um imperial fist and dorn wanting is i'm think i think imperial fist is dorn and dorn wanting to be all rigid with the rules and honor and yeah i think we're finally doing imperial fist in our illiterate baby boy final do think, answer do you think rogel dorn alike self sacrifice well i mean he did sacrifice like all of his people to try and go get what's his face <laughs> <laughs> Sac- that's <laughs> that is not what I would call a sacrifice. It might as well be. I mean, he wasn't doing shit with him. He just go die, that, everybody. Calling that a sacrifice is when you lose in dodgeball and you say, "Well, I let you win." He got fucked. <laughs> with this, this is true. That was always my excuse in dodgeball when I when I got out. I was I'm sacrificing myself to give you all a better chance at winning. I actually yeah. cut out a small part of this quote because I thought you would get it too easily. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the ending one more time. It goes, honor, self-sacrifice, self-reliance, brotherhood. It is our Promethean creed, and all must adhere to it if we are to prosper. Let this be the first lesson. Oh, I don't... Mm. Bruh. I don't, I don't, Promethean should ring bells, but for some reason, I don't know if it's just because early, all, all, <laughs> all oh I'm thinking of when Lord. I hear Promethean is like the fucking gas they lit on fire in the last Caiaphas came book. <laughs> wow, that, yeah, okay, follow that line of thought. Um, is it, oh, is it, is it, is it, is it Tao? Maybe? Oh my fucking god. Is it, is it Tao? Maybe? 
I'm gonna have an Let's aneurysm. Let's go, Tao. Just have who, the, who the shit is it? What is Prometheum? It's I don't it's, know. It's like a it's like a fucking gas that they use or some correct. shit for flamers. Flamers, really? Yeah, fire. Yeah, cool. Fire. It. it mm. Oh, just tell me what the no. fuck this thing is, man. Just no. fucking. What are we doing? Vulcan. Well, I guess that makes sense. Oh my lord. I, I, I guess that makes sense. Vulcan. Well, honor, hey, I, self sacrifice, self reliance, the Promethean well, Creed. I don't know what the Promethean Creed is. Promethean is fire, it's the salamanders. I have with you poop. That's not English. I don't care. That being said, I'm pretty hyped to learn about Vulcan. I know. Oh my lord. Okay. All right. Vul see that hammer Vulcan has? He's gonna bonk you. Oh gonna... no. I I didn't. I don't deserve to go to horny jail. I did. I did nothing to deserve a bonk. Do you remember when when um we were getting drunk and reading all guardsmen party and you were like, uh, hey, have you heard about this hentai where this lady lactates so much? that this guy has to like swim away or something remember when you told me about oh, that oh that that was visitor q not a hentai but oh um, yeah i do remember yeah so shut the fuck up we're learning about vulcan bitch <laughs> <laughs> i'm i'm not opposed to that though Good. also don't go watch visitor q i know we've just talked about it don't even google it don't even google it <sighs> okay mm -mm. also he didn't need to swim away he just needed to bring out an umbrella because it was just a lot So, so, so Vulcan, eh? So, oh, so I, Vulcan. I, I hate this so much. Okay, Vulcan. <laughs> you brought it up. I didn't, Fuck I wasn't even thinking about it. You, you brought it up. <laughs> you did. You brought this on yourself. Oh, we're going to have a talk after this. <laughs> All right. We're going to have a talk after this. All right. Vulcan. Oh, no. Yes. I wanted to do a nice, warm cuddly sort of uh, thing for christmas it's almost christmas time you know it's mm -hmm. nice and, and 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 happy and nice guy so we're doing vulcan all right okay is, is it it's just vulcan though it's not the salamanders that'll be i'm assuming next time like this is correct just, okay cool, this cool. is just vulcan next one gotcha. we'll talk about the salamanders in general but vulcan he is uh, my favorite of the loyalist primarchs um, he is basically the antithesis of Conrad Kurz. <laughs> they are complete opposites. He is an absolute Chad, and I mean that in a much very literal way because his face looks like the Chad meme. Um, just basically oh, yeah, the direction. Yeah, I mean, look, look at that chin. Like, he's, got a, he's got a strong chin game. He does. Mm -hmm. uh, so the Vulcan. Vulcan, of course, was one of the 20 Primarchs. He was mm -hmm. in the gestation capsule, 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 blah, blah, blah. and then the dark powers grabbed him and said, this shit empty, yeet, <laughs> and he was thrown all the way across the world to a death world planet, a feudal death world known as Nocturne. Ooh, okay. N Nocturne, and if, if Shai puts a picture of the League of Legends character, I'm quitting the podcast. Um, oh, wow, dude, why, why not just prime the pump for her? Because I know she would, I think she would do it anyway, but now she has a reason to do it. Is that like a and shitty lead character or something? It's just a ghost guy. It's oh, fine. okay. Um, Nocturne, anyway, is a massively volcanic planet. Uh, mm. The thing about Nocturne is that it is covered in barren deserts and, and the ash is so heavy that it completely blots out the sun because so the entire planet Ooh. is like dark red orange hue, but it has a moon known as Prometheus, that is, orbits it quite closely, and the gravitational pull causes things like volcanic eruptions and and uh, oh. tons of earthquakes all the time. And in uh, particular, every 15 years, Prometheus gets really close to the planet, and because uh -huh. of that, it creates something known as the Time of Trial, where... It's the closest it's ever been, so the gravitational pull has all the volcanoes just start spewing shit oh. everywhere. The ash gets thicker, the rivers and and jagged cracks of lava just br it's it gets all fucked. Wow, um, that is that is the epitome of a death world. It um, is literally a giant lava planet. Yeah, it's 
I'm I was curious. Uh, most Primarchs that end up on a Death World don't end up quite so good. It seems like if you if you get stuck on a Death World, a lot of the times you end up being uh, part of a Traitor Legion. So it's kind of interesting to hear that he got put on this really, 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 really shitty planet, and he still ended up a good guy. I don't think I can't think of any Chaos Primarch that lived on a Death World. Was Travo Mortarian had... a Death World? Because it was all poisonous. Oh, uh, Mortarian and... was. Yeah, Mortarian had this, the poisony world. Yeah. I guess but, Angron um, just had a shitty world that wanted to enslave people. And Angron really was just a death slave. World. Yeah. Uh, Kurz was on a hive city, Nostra or hive world Nostromo. That's pretty per shitty. Percherabo was on Olympia, which was fine. Uh, I don't think. Yeah. Like, Fulgrim didn't have a great world, but I don't, they weren't like. I don't think they were death worlds. They, were, they weren't fun. But they weren't a death world where oh, okay. life is is where it's yeah. like Katacha, Katachan, you know? Yeah, I guess I was confusing death world with mildly really garbage planet. Yeah, a bad life versus a death world are two definitely different things. Like yeah. Krieg. Krieg is a Ooh, death world death right world. now. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Anywho, okay. he landed and he was actually taken in by someone known as a, a metal worker, known as a black smitter or smiter. Not blacksmith, but I, I don't know why it's called that. But Oh, um, so, they, so people actually live here. It's not, It wasn't just him on this death world? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's like a little feudal world. Yeah. It, oh. He's, there are people here. Wow. Okay, so, that's, that's hard. That's hardcore. So he came down like a meteor and landed in this dude's house. <laughs> and just and, and fucked up his house. And this guy's name was Nabel. Not like Nobel, but like N apostrophe B E L. Nabel. Nah, nah, Bell. Nah, 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 Bell. <laughs> in uh in this city settlement known as Hesioid. And okay. I, he was taking it as a foster child. And on this planet, they had this thing, this teaching of the Promethean cult. Now, Promethean cult is like a subsect of religion that it was deemed as not heretical by the ecclesiarchy mm -hmm. uh because it's just a, a variation on standard imperial faith okay. uh, it's the idea of, of self not self-sacrifice but selflessness the the importance of of helping the the innocent and also uh being forged on the anvil of, of like strength this concept of like lots of importance and smithing and that kind of yeah. stuff like their own little little uh religion Man, if I had known about their uh, them being so big into self sacrifice, that quote would have been so much easier to get. Holy yeah. shit! Have I never talked about the self sacrifice of? I I don't think we've talked salamanders? about. I don't think we've talked about salamanders or Vulcan outside of that one time curse through Vulcan into the, um, the, the giant labyrinth maze to fuck with him, that and, and all and all the subsequent true. torture that Curse did. So. That probably is true. Um, they literally have a stratagem called self-sacrifice. Uh, you, you'll see soon. Um, anywho, basically, it was kind of prophesized that they'd have like a savior. There's always like the chosen one deal, but sure. um, and so when he took him in as a foster child and named him, you know, Vulcan. And the main thing to to note here is that his foster family and the tribe and the group he grew up with really gave him like a lot of love like they Aww. treated him like a true son they cared for him they they you know they taught him they read him bedtime stories Aww. they really gave a shit that's so sweet that's that's so unlike anything no you normally find in 40k Not love they, they, appreciation they gave affection that's and especially on such a shitty planet <laughs> maybe maybe they have to be nice because the planet is so garbage it's like well if we're not nice to each other the planets are not going to be nice to us so Whew. they found solace in one another a lot a lot of yeah. care and compassion in this like tribe group because it's kind of feudal world made it really important for you know vulcan yeah um eventually he became naturally he's a primarch so he's a big ass dude uh and then he became full height full size after three years uh, that sounds so good. He he was full size, full adult size, big old Vulcan at three. At three, he was like normal. <laughs> Whoa. He was full adulthood at three. 
And naturally, like a Primarch, he was very intelligent. He was sure. quick to learn. But also, a big part of Nocturne is its smithing. Uh, so he sure. was able to learn this insane metalworking from all the famed smiths on Nocturne. And eventually, after he worked in his adopted father's forge a ton, that was kind of his job. He worked in the forge. Mm -hmm. And but at some point, though, the beasts of Nocturne, known as the Dark Wraiths, arrived. Oh, no. <laughs> or sorry, Dusk Wraiths. And the, in the Dusk Wraiths were actually a thing that would arrive in Nocturne quite often. And people would hide. You know, they, they would sure. hide whenever Dusk Wraiths arrived. But the Dusk Wraiths were actually known as the Dark Eldar. Oh, oh, oh boy, that's no good. And, so, yes. So the Dark Eldar would actually go to Nocturne often to take and their slaving runs to take slaves, uh, and they would hide from the Dark Eldar, of course. But of course. during the fourth year, Vulcan hid along with them, but he decided, no way. No more fucking elves on my <laughs> fucking planet. No more fucking <laughs> slaves. And he he stepped out of his workshop with dual wielding blacksmith hammers. Ooh, let's go. And and roused the people from hiding and killed single handedly not one, not two, but a hundred dark Eldar. Oh, slaughtered them like they were animals? Which I think might be a little bit of an overstatement that is a little silly because I'm not quite sure if even a Primarch can take down a hundred Dark Eldar slavers in one go. Ooh. But, uh, it's fair Vulcan. enough. Sure, it's Vulcan, whatever. why not, you sure. know? It's so he, he drove, like, he became known as the Fireborn. And like this oh. undefeated warrior who took down the slave barges and crushed the dusk wraiths, driving them away from Nocturne, who they stabbed him with poison blades and he just wouldn't stop and yada yada yeah. yada. Uh, so no wonder you like him so much. You fucked up a bunch of elves. Yeah. <laughs> so eventually, after this big victory against the Dark Eldar, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, they actually created a tournament. Involving tests of strength and craftsmanship uh, for Nocturne. Because it was just like, hey, after this fight, they just had these great, crazy tournaments that they created to show off strength in battle. And, and you know, really kind of test like the Olympic Games, you know? Yeah, cool. During one of these open ceremonies, a stranger appeared. An unusually pale, because everyone on Nocturne has very, very dark skin and blazing red eyes. Oh, yeah, because all the ash, it blots out the sun, so, you know, you're not exactly well, also, get a tan. Like, I, who knows? Because like, the settlers of Nocturne, we have no idea what their ethnicity was, but over enough generations, you know, pigment, that kind of deal. Yeah, and yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Um, but naturally, but also blazing red eyes, so a little interesting there. <laughs> they look like monsters. A little, a little scary sometimes with the red eyes. It's so um, crazy that these are the nice people, and it's like they, they look like hideous demon beasts. I mean, they don't look hideous. They just have very dark skin and blazing red eyes, which yeah. it's, not, it's not like they're they are not hideous. They don't look, have like four eyes. Oh, that's true. They're not like deformed. Three mouths or they, anything. They look, they look demonic. Let's put it that way. They the look red good. eyes are a little frightening, but they look like just generally people it's just with blazing red eyes. Is, the, is, is there any reason for the blazing red eyes? Is it because they're always looking into like these volcanoes that are blowing up and it's so bright that their eyes just... Or I, is it GW just aesthetics? thought it... GW thought it looked cool. I have no idea. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Um, I get it. But anyway, in one of these opening ceremonies, they had someone known as the Pale Stranger. Okay. And because pale, because you know, pale skin. Pale you skin, know, obviously. Sure. Yep. Compared like the pale to the rider. Yeah. Yeah. Compared to people in Nocturne. Uh, and he challenged Vulcan, who would best everybody like so easily. Oh, and sure. said, Primark. Yeah, of course. And they said the loser would have to swear their eternal loyalty and obedience to the victor. Oh, it's uh, Biggie, Vul isn't it? Uh, yeah, of course, it's fucking Biggie. It's fucking Biggie, yep. And Vulcan <laughs> agreed to the terms, because he's like, uh, I'm Vulcan? <laughs> I got this shit. Like, I, I want to remind you that Vulcan is the largest of all the Primarchs by a, a decent margin. Oh, so he is a big, big. Vulcan is enormous. How, like he, how tall are we talking? Like 10 feet tall? 20? Not 20 feet tall. Like 11 feet tall? Uh, Primark 
height chart. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, we'll do it live. <laughs> uh, here, here we go. Uh, here's Vulcan. There's Dorn, and there's a human. Whoa! Yeah, he's, he a, is, he's, he's a big dude. Whoa! He is like a whole head taller than Dorn, and probably twice as thick. Oh my god! Also, can you imagine the fright of a human like us standing next to Vulcan or in Vulcan's presence? Oh he, my god! It is, it is certainly it is certainly something. He's a titan. He is enormous. Um, so they began their their the games, right? The mm -hmm. the Promethean games, and for a while there was just it was just a draw consistently over and over oh. again. Like the, one of the the uh, feats of strength was to hold an entire anvil over your head for as long as possible. And all the other contestants would do this for a couple of minutes before failing. But mm -hmm. Vulcan and the Pale Stranger, Emperor, <laughs> yeah, did know. it for a half the half a day with no sign of tiring. It's wow. like, okay, now we need to forge a, a, a amazing crafted weapon. And they tied again. And it just kept on tying. So eventually the final test was they had to go to the largest volcano in on Nocturne, which is aptly named Mount Deathfire. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Normally GW is pretty good with the naming schemes and they come up with some pretty cool names, but uh, I guess they took the day off when they were naming Mount Deathfire, eh? Mount, Mount Deathfire. <laughs> so they had to go up to Mount Deathfire and slay the strongest creature on Nocturne, the Salamander. Ah, the largest the fire drake. And so Vulcan fashioned a hammer and the emperor fashioned a sword. And Vulcan found his prey first and with one single blow just went whoop bam and smashed his head off because it's Vulcan and he fucks everything up. Of course. He then grabbed uh, carrying the carcass back, the volcano unexpectedly erupted and yeeted him off a cliff. Huh. Which he was then managed to grab the edge with his one hand, but stubbornly grasped the tail of the salamander in the other. And so he was oh. holding on to this edge of the mountain, not quite able to pull himself up because of the salamander's carcass. Mm -hmm. And he was there for hours. Oh, he was Eventually, hanging on to the ledge for hours? Just hours. not wanting to let go of the salamander? Wow. Nope. What a chad. Eventually, though, his hold started to slip. And that was the time when the stranger, I'm just gonna keep calling, I'm gonna call him Biggie. Okay. Biggie appeared carrying his own salamander. Um, and very quickly he saw the predicament and he threw the salamander carcass into the lava flow because it had a heat resistant uh, scales to use it as a bridge to cross over and reach Vulcan and save his life. Oh, wow, that's pretty. So when they returned, Vulcan was declared the winner because he returned with a salamander hide. Huh. Uh, and the stranger had lost his. Biggie yeah. lost his. Uh, but Vulcan then silenced the crowd and knelt before the stranger. Fuck, Emperor, whatever. Yeah. Uh, stating that any man who valued life over pride was worthy of his service. Because he threw away his pride by removing the salamander carcass mm -hmm. to save his life. And that was, of course, when the emperor revealed himself to be the emperor. Biggie. You know and what is the most surprising part of this story? That the emperor it's... didn't just teleport or some bullshit? No, it's that the emperor was being a good dad. Oh, like that's, that's a, yeah. This, like, <laughs> yeah. This is a this that's a good dad moment. Like you you're sacrificing your own personal glory and anything you would have because you want to save your boy. You got to save him from falling because he's too stubborn to he's he can be a good dad if he tries. He can or, be. Or this was his 4D chess and he knew that Vulcan would kneel because he knew Vulcan was a good guy. It's possible. It is possible. Um 
Considering what Big E has done in the past, I, I try to give him less credit. <laughs> yeah, like, you, you think about uh, poor old Angron, and it's like, um, I don't think he has the capacity to really think about. Also, I was wondering, do you think Big E was sandbagging? Because, like, he's Big E. Like, he, he right? Like, would he really well, get into draws with Vulcan? It wasn't the fact, it, it was the fact that, like, it would take so long for them to decide a winner like if they did the anvil thing it would probably be like weeks yeah or something you know it, it just yeah. it wouldn't it just couldn't at that point it's like all right fuck this we'll just move on to the next the next uh thing. yeah yeah um, i guess but uh, and uh, you know i mean horace did take Big E to the inch of death yeah he did well, well i guess you're right he did i mean i guess primarchs are somewhat a match for Big E. Eh, not quite, but it, it, eh, point, somewhat ish. Vulcan's a big boy. He is. He is. He is a large lad, and it's true. So, anywho, uh, he eventually took Vulcan under his wing, but actually didn't give him his legion immediately. He huh. Vulcan was a man who understood smithing and creation, but he had no concept of war. He never waged war. He never. They never had war. He fought oh. back Dark Eldar, but he didn't know anything about that. Yeah. So he had to have him like kind of put him under his tutelage for a while and kind of keep him secret from the wider Imperium besides the other Primarchs mm -hmm. and just kind of teach him, you know, and just kind of just kind of have him learn and figure out things and and have him learn the ways of war, which, of course, he's Vulcan. He's a Primarch. He learned pretty quick. Sure. Sure. And he was learned more about weaponry and, and the smithing choice of that. And eventually... Mm -hmm. What he did do actually was have this big initiate group on Nocturne. And they were kind of just, this is what the book that I read was about, was he was kind of waiting for, the, just kind of waiting for uh, the answer to go reunite with the Terran-born Salamanders. Right. And there's kind of there, him and about 3,000 new initiates from Nocturne. Where it's like, when are we gonna go? When are we gonna go? I don't know when we're gonna go. I want to go. You know, I want to. I want to get get working on this thing. And eventually, yeah. Big E's finally said, "All right, you can go. You can go meet up with your boys because your boys have <laughs> been rescuing civilians, planet after planet, against this orc war, and they are about to get fucked." Oh. That, that okay. was the, that's the main <laughs> thing is that there have been like five planets in this system against this massive orc war, and every time they've been basically just uh, evacuating civilians and going back, 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 losing tons of casualties, and they said, all right, yeah. fuck it, this is our last stand, we're on this final planet, this is the last stand, if we don't, if we don't get away, we're dead. Like, wow. And all the civilians we try to rescue are dead, but this is our final stand. And that's when Vulcan arrives and is like, I'm here and to save you. And, and saves the day, yeah. yeah um, right. That's what um, the book was. That was what the book was about. And I oh, just, about I, Vulcan I just, saving uh, the salamanders from the Orkwa. Yeah. Eh. I mean, that's pretty hardcore that they were actually able to. You said, what, they had five planets against an entire Orkwa? That's... Yeah, like... Th uh, that they were able to hold out at all is pretty fucking impressive and they weren't just completely overrun That's... i mean they were they were overrun planet by planet but they were constantly like evacuating civilians more yeah. and more and more that's, um that's it was pretty, about nineteen thousand of the terran born space marines against uh, over a million orcs a couple hundred ships and about a dozen space hulks wow that's, yeah uh, that's no small feat to hold out against that that sort of uh onslaught that tsunami of orcs uh it, that's it's a lot that's hardcore so once he did arrive he brought three thousand new nocturne raised initiates and of course with them arriving and the newly restored vigor of the uh uh salamanders they basically were like oh yes we're here we can kill the orcs and then they slaughtered the orcs and murdered them all you know battle and all that kind of stuff sure classic Damn. One Primarch and some of his boys are able to turn back a wad. That's not bad. Not bad, Vulcan. Not bad. Well, not bad. some of his boys. That was like like 20,000 Space Marines. Yeah, but you're going up against millions of orcs, too. These are Space Marines, though. That's true. How, 
How much do you think? How many orcs do you think one space marine is worth? Thousands. I. Uh, it depends. This. This. That's too much. Are they hand to hand? Does he have his guns? Does he have grenades? Does he have tactic tactics? You know, is yes. the or the orcs being silly? I don't fucking know, dude. It depends. Okay. 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 He could kill. He could kill hundreds of orcs if he had a good position and enough bolts or rounds. It's true. Vulcan himself could probably take out a good chunk of orcs. Vulcan's playing Dynasty Warriors with the way he's <laughs> swinging that hammer around. I love a good Dynasty Warriors reference. I, I love Dynasty Warriors. I love Warriors games. They're fun. So when he arrived, the first thing they did was kneel before Vulcan. And the first thing Vulcan said was, no. Ah, uh, he's honorable. Chad, he Chad face, side profile, no. No. He said anyone who put themselves so high above the, uh, you know, the well, one, I guess, Call of Duty, but also um, actual Call of Duty this time, but ah. spent so much effort and full self-sacrifice in order to save civilians is worthy not to bow between under him. So instead, he had bid them to rise and then Vulcan bowed to them. What a good boy. I, I kind of thought that's where that was going. But what a what a what a Chad! What a what a good lad! I, mm -hmm. I can see why you like Vulcan so much. He is such a good dude. He is. He's like I you the the idea of bowing is not. It's to serve respect to those uh, with uh, like bravery and and self sacrifice and spirit. And I yeah. must respect you. You know yeah, he I doesn't mean... he doesn't like the whole bowing thing. Vulcan never has. He's he's very like, we don't do that here. Mm -hmm. Vulcan sees everyone as his equal. Damn, what a what a good what a what a good guy. What a good loyalist Primarch. Mm -hmm. He's he's probably the best boy we've talked about in terms of like just everything. He's he does seem like he's kind of the nicest, most honorable, and just he's the goodest. He, if we're talking about the most pure of hearts, I absolutely do think Vulcan is number one. Yeah. He cares the most for people and civilians. The concept of self-sacrifice is like we as space Marines have a duty to the wider Imperium. Our duty is to be there for the overarching Imperium. And that is our job. Our lives do not matter more. So we will spend them if we must. And it actually gave the, the 18th Legion also, by the way, it gave mm -hmm. the 18th Legion kind of actually a bad rap. Because really? it assumed that any battle that they were part of was a battle that was going to take overwhelming losses because their want for uh, self-sacrifice and helping people had them fight the toughest battles on the hardest right. worlds. So they would suffer more casualties than any other uh, chapter because they were trying to save everybody instead of just looking out for themselves? Absolutely. Wow. What a, what a, what a bunch of chads what a bunch the of bunch good of guys Chad. damn they're they're super good like they're good boys they really are i just so, wish their armor looked a little cooler because it's really on the nose with like the salamander dragon vibe it's with, with the green it's it's really on the nose and i just i don't know i don't like it i mean it's, sure but you know you're wrong anyway uh continuing <laughs> I, I, I actually my my issue isn't actually the the fire with it or, or the dragon stuff. My issue is actually the uh, I don't like the um, I don't like the green. I think the green is a funky looking color. Yeah, I I I also do not like the green. It's I'm it, I'm painting my my salamanders with like a like with in black armor but with flame decals and shit, and I'm giving them the red eyes. So it's like kind of yeah. Eh, I think it would be up. good if it was like a darker green. Yeah, uh, the the uh, Horus Heresy green is actually a little bit more dark than the current modern green. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't look that bad, but fire is it's like orange and red and yellow, and combining that with green just doesn't really do it for me. Agreed. I mean, um, I get what they were going for. It's like, hey, look, we're dragons, we're salamanders, uh, reptilian, green, fire, bleh. But it, I don't know. I don't like the I don't like the aesthetic. It's not my favorite thing. Yeah. Uh, but anyway. Uh, so once he reunited with the Terran board, he actually turned the Terran born salamanders into his personal pyre guard. That's the name of this personal guard is called the pyre guard. P Y R E. Um, That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And the main leader who held back the orc assault, a guy named Cassian Vaughn or Vaughn. I don't know. 
uh, he actually handcrafted him a, his own dreadnought uh, by Ooh. Vulcan's <laughs> hands called the Iron Dragon. Okay. So that he's got cool. his own dreadnought, you know, and that's his new, and that, that kind of made this thing where the Nocturne Born and Terran Born wouldn't be at odds with each other because he made the Terran Born his, his major guard because they showed such bravery against this Orkwa. Mm. Um, so then led into the Great Crusade. Now it's time for Vulcan to do Great Crusade things. So the first mm -hmm. thing he did was uh, get attached with a, the Iron Hands and the Death Guard to go deal with a world called Caldera. This is where him and the Primarch of the Iron Hands, Ferris Manus, kind of became kind of friends a little bit. Um, okay. Ferris Manus is also a smithy boy. He likes to make shit. He's also got oh, his yeah, own yeah. hammer. Yeah, and so they started kind of getting along a little bit. I don't talk much about Ferris Mans because he's boring, but also <laughs> because we haven't done an episode on him. But yep, yep. Uh, basically, this Caldera world is a weird one. This was actually a world where the Dark Eldar would raid them a lot, but then the Craft oh. World Eldar decided to save them from the Dark Eldar. So then the entire <laughs> planet became worshippers of the Craft World Eldar. Oh, great. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and great. Yeah, that that that's not great. And then the uh, and then after some time, the Salamanders and the forces arrived in order to deal with them and be their saviors. But then they were like, the Eldar were our saviors. Oh no, I'm sure Vulcan did not like hearing that. No. So this ended oh. with them. This was kind of a quick. The Caldera is its own big battle thing, but. The, the long and the short of it, because I'm, I'm going to skip ahead here a bit, is mm -hmm. that they found a big old webway portal on the bottom, and a bunch of these humans were attempting to sacrifice a dark Eldar witch uh, to ward off them. Oh! And Vulcan <laughs> was like, oh my god, there's a webway here, oh my god, these people are so insane, okay, fuck, fuck, fuck. And so then he set the planet on fire. Oh... I kind of had a feeling that this planet was not going to last long with worshipping Eldar and there's a webway portal and they've got a they've got a witch to Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. Did it, and he just he just lights a match and poof, sets it on fire and just He he ordered that the population was so far corrupted that they had to be cleansed by flame. Oh. Um all righty then. Yes, um, hmm. and it's it was something he was really upset about. He oh, okay. he was not happy about it, and the the world had been renamed to Caldera. Mm -hmm. Um, hence it was a dead world, and it could now have new human colonists as well. But um, oh. yeah, so he and, was really beat up about having to do it. It's not like he wanted to do it. It's not like he had a a, a blood feud was oh these are fucking elves i remember what the elves did to me and just looking for any excuse he just he did what he had to do yeah and he, but he he doesn't like he's not like a war person he likes to smith and craft he's a little bit like perturamo in that way which is kind of strange um but, but he doesn't like war because he deems it a cost of human life mm. um there was a there was some quote about like war Something about like a uh, war what is, is always it good a, for. Yeah. Well, we, you know what? Yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> Fuck it. Let's go. War. What is it good for? Vulcan <laughs> M41. Gotta <laughs> <laughs> go. <laughs> um, the next one area they did, though, they actually went to a planet known as Where Is My Link? I wow, that's thought. a weird planet. It's called Where Is My Link? Huh. Shut. Shut. Just Boy, shut. GW really losing Caraton. touch with how to names these planets. Caraton. Caraton. Caraton or something. I don't know. And okay. he got to work with our good esteemed Night Lords. Oh. And the Primar <laughs> Conrad Kurz. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. I oh boy, I'm I'm sure Vulcan loved hanging out with them. Boy, they must have gotten together mm, and just really seen eye to eye and really been just best buddies, eh? So, <laughs> in order to bring uh, this planet under compliance, uh, Kurz and his group uh, skinned an entire city and oh, uh, broadcasted it across the planet. Of course they yeah, did. That, that sounds like a very Night Lord curse thing to do. Sure, sure. And Vulcan was none too pleased. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
You don't say. He's Vulcan like, did not join in the skinning, you say? The skinning of civilians, mind you. <laughs> oh, yep, that Night Lords, yep, check, that checks that box. Yep. Mm, check that box. Vulcan was <laughs> like, I Vulcan You what? Went to Conrad and said, you put only one ice cube in my drink? <laughs> Ew, boy, that, yeah, I, I am, is this sort of where their little, um, I assume this is where the, the Conrad Vulcan feud really begins with them and, and all this Night Lord skinning shit and just Night Lords being Night Lords? Well, so, have I ever told you about Vulcan and the Eldar child? Uh, I think you've mentioned it. Uh, when right. we're like, oh yeah, Vulcan's a good guy. There's always someone's like, yeah, but what about that thing with the Eldar? And I'm like, uh, I don't know. So basically, during this fight in the in the planetary city, uh, there were a bunch more craft world Eldar, and they were they were <laughs> these elves around. follow Vulcan around like he just they, they he's an do. elf magnet. Jesus. They they uh the group of people on this planet worshipped these like witch Eldar as if they were gods. Oh boy, that's not a good look, but all right, sure. No. And so if I do a quote from the book here, it says, Vulcan relented him, the fire died, and so too the riots, which was now being wrestled under control. A single Eldar witch remained, her face blackened by soot, her silver hair singed and burned. She looked up at the Lord of Drake's eyes watering, because a bunch of her fucking people were murdered. Uh, rage telegraphed in the tightness of her lips and the angle of her brow. The faltering, faltering kind shield that had spared her life. I'm assuming it's like a, like a shield. Yeah. Uh, life crackled and disappeared into ether. She was not much older than a child, a witchling. Teeth clenched, fighting the grief at the death of her coven. The Eldar offered up her wrists in surrender. So, oh. during this period of time, Eldar had someone known as a remembrancer. A remembrancer back before 40k era in 30k era was kind of like pre-commissar slash scribe slash intelligence officer. Oh. We is, mentioned them very lightly. Is that where the re is that where the artist that does the the elf abs gets their name from? Drunk rem Oh shit, you're probably right. Oh man. That's what a, well, now I get their name and why they're always ah. drawing elf abs. Very good elf abs too, I might add. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, heresy. Uh, also, <laughs> this is this is also when um, he had a very a friendly remembrancer, uh, a very a personal remembrancer named Seraph, and she was a a, a very nice lady. He he liked her a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, the thing is, is that there was a stampede of people. And the Night Lords really wanted to kill some Eldar. So they decided to just open up into the crowd. Um, oh. <laughs> giant stampede of humans and Eldar alike. And they were just like, well, you know, uh, sometimes we'll hit one of them. And they all just started gunning down bolts into the crowd because these are Night Lords. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah. I mean, again, this, this is really just Night Lords being Night Lords. But, uh, man, Vulcan has got to be pissed. I mean, yeah. beyond pissed. Like, it, it's not like he was, like, he's already mad because, hey, you skinned a bunch of civilians for no reason. Really wasn't too keen on that. He's got to be fuming. His head must explode in, like, just like a cartoon volcano that's just, you know? You know how, uh, you know, what, you know what the words from the, the uh, Night Lords are always saying? Remember, no Russian. <laughs> All right. uh, but one of the stray bolts hit his remembrancer and killed her. Oh no! <laughs> and so oh, this is no. this is post this, where he uh, sees this Eldar, angry Eldar, after his remembrancer has been shot, and all of her people have been killed and stuff. And so Vulcan is like fucking furious. Yeah. And yeah. so he saw her last, like in this field of dead corpses of humans and everything alike. He sees this one Eldar witch. And so seeing her, he went straight to anger and it says, quote, his eyes blazed. Embers flickered into infernos. The Eldar child raised her hands higher, defiance turning into fear upon her alien features. Numian, which I believe is a, a 
salamander's person held mm-hmm. the others back warning them with a look not to intervene glaring down at her vulcan raised his fist and then really quickly in his mind it said don't do it but then it, the air turned into fire and the Eldar's child screams didn't last as they merged with the roar of the flames turning into a horrific cacophony of sound. Oh. When it was over, the last Xenos was a smoking husk of burnt meat. And Vulcan looked up and met the gaze of the Night Lords. Whoa. So Vulcan was like, <laughs> oh. was like, uh-oh, child. Bird, <laughs> snap. Immolated. Bonk. Yeah, holy shit. Just set this Ugh. Eldar child alight, which I will state Ugh. haunted him for a long period of time. He was yeah. very upset about what he did because he was like, my moment of weakness, what have I done? He gave in to rage and just tonk. Yeah, he, he kind of had this like, how am I better than Kurz if I did this shit? Like, you know, just, well. just I, I know, I know, but you get the point. Like, yeah. set a child yeah. alight. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, I, I get it. Yeah. Oh boy. But uh, but yes, he was none too pleased with Conrad <laughs> yeah. as he went to go confront him. And the two of them punched each other a little bit. Uh, but eventually he was, Vulcan was like, I'm telling on you. And he went to, I think, Dorn and Fulgrim. And oh, he t- boy scouted them, him? Well, it's Vulcan. He's a good boy. Yeah, he is a boy scout, isn't he? That's yeah. Fair. So he went to go tell Vulcan and, and uh, not Vulcan. Um, Vulcan went to go tell Dorn and and Fulcrum about what had happened and kind of sowed the seeds of anger yeah. between the two of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so after that, uh, after that came naturally the heresy. The heresy. Yeah, what was Vulcan doing in the heresy? I don't quite remember. Well, do you remember the drop site massacre? Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is where the Salamanders took probably the largest amount of casualties they possibly could. Uh, they were a major, major part of the drop site massacre. Um, they were probably the ones that I think maybe took the most casualties. Ah. Unless the Raven Guard got it worse, but I think the Salamanders got boned the most. Um, so much so that Vulcan was like having his brothers just dying all around him. Oh, and he no. was like, because and this is Vulcan, so he was like, these are my fucking sons. Yeah. And and they're and they're getting just murdered, and, and then Ferris Manus got his head cut off by Fulgrim. Oh, that's who was yeah. his buddy. Yeah, that was his that was his blacksmithing buddy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, and so no. the, his pyre guard were attempting to keep chase and survive with him, but they were getting gunned down from every point like around. Oh. And, and there's a good picture Shy posted, a very good one of Vulcan, you know, clutching one of his brothers. Oh, um, he, yeah, he looks a little... Oh, that's where the 360 picture comes from! Vulcan forces... Or <laughs> yeah. forces Vulcan to play Xbox 360. <laughs> that's where the picture comes from! <laughs> <laughs> I immediately saw that, I was like, oh no, 360! Black Ops 3 on the yeah. 360. <laughs> I hate that that's immediately where my mind went to when I saw that. I hate it. You've corrupted me with your fucking memes. But to <laughs> round it all out, the drop site massacre, uh, our good, our good <clears throat> smug asshole Peter Turbo, um, you know, throw, throw, throw the picture <laughs> of him Turbo. smiling with the glasses on Shy. You, you know, you know the image I'm thinking. You of. know the one, Shy. You know the one. Smiling the Perturavo <laughs> with the glasses. Yeah, do the thing, Shy. Do the thing. Yay. Lol, lol said, lol said, uh, Vulcan. Goodbye, oh, wow. goodbye, child. <laughs> oh. But, uh, Peter Turbo decided, well, if I'm gonna deal with Vulcan in any way, I gotta deal with it the proper way. So he decided to nuke him. Um, of course he did. And I, I mean, like, I mean, he literally sent, like, a, like a nuclear warhead, and he aimed it at Vulcan's body. <laughs> just, just, like, <laughs> like, I don't think you understand. He was like, him. <laughs> Him there, that guy <laughs> nuke him, kill him. Holy shit! He like he was throwing a dart at a dart. Let's that one right there. Let's get a bullseye on that one and just. Boom. If, if there's wow. gonna be a no kill like overkill, it's gonna be our friend Peter Turbo. <laughs> that's that is that is yeah. That's a little much, but hey, hopefully you get the job done, buddy. It's like it's like using a it's like using an AR15 to kill an ant. 
Yeah, it really is like trying to run over an ant with a tank tread. It's like, do you really need all that? Is that necessary? So this, I mean, in a sense, Shia made a good point. She says, is it really overkill if he survived? Which he oh, did, boy. of course, because it's Vulcan, he's perpetual, and we all hate that. Did, did um, they actually hit him dead on? I don't know, but I'm pretty sure it was really close. Okay, I was going to say, if he took that warhead to the chest... He took that shit to the chest with the chest out. Like, I, I don't know in what fictional world you're like, yeah, he, he made it. Yep. <laughs> He's alive. Well, yeah, he, the, thing, the main thing is that all of his fucking brothers around him didn't live. Oh, yeah. Primark has a chance to survive 1v1ing a nuke, but maybe not his uh, salamanders. Yeah, well, that's... only one Primark has a chance. His name is Vulcan. <laughs> <laughs> sure, because he's a perpetual brickie. I know. It's, it's yeah. Anyway, yeah. so he survived that. And once he kind of revived or whatever, he found himself surrounded by the Night Lords and the Iron Warriors. And so Vulcan mm. kind of resigned himself to fate. Uh, in yeah. a sense of, well, not really resigned himself, but he fought he fought to the death, but he was eventually overwhelmed and was shot, stabbed, and bludgeoned by the Night Lords and Iron Warriors into unconsciousness. Ugh. And now, Conrad Kurz, now fully insane, yeah. uh, awoke to have him as his prisoner. Uh. Uh, had him trapped in chains among the uh, giant Hulk owned by the 8th Legion, and over the span of several months, the uh, Night Hunter took sadistic pleasure in attempting to break Vulcan's body and mind. Yeah, um, I remember and this part. Eventually, just to have a good time with it. Uh, but yeah. the main thing is, eventually, he did cut his head off out in a in a fit of rage, and <laughs> his head like regrew. I'm assuming like Deadpool style. Oh. It, it, it came back because that's the thing is his cells regenerate yeah. and this had Kurz like go fucking crazy even more <laughs> so he's like what this is and bullshit. so and so he he did his head off he he ripped out his throat with a piece of cutlery oh. he stabbed him through the chest he had his limbs pulled off with his oh. own arms he he had him eviscerated and flayed he shot him with a hundred bolters, he put him in a ventilation shaft of the starship engine. He had him stripped naked and thrown on an airlock. And wow. nothing worked. So, eventually, he decided to basically try... It's, he couldn't break his body, so he wanted to break his mind. To oh. make him feel as insane as he was. <laughs> Good luck. He, he wanted to make Vulcan admit that he was no less of a monster. So he put him through unwinnable trials. He had a prison, uh, an entire prisoner section full of civilians that had a giant slab of metal slowly going to crush them. And uh, the only thing keeping it from crushing them was Vulcan holding on to chains, which oh. he couldn't hold on to forever. And eventually yeah. he would let go and then all these civilians would be crushed under the weight. Oh um, boy, that that is a hell of a way to break Vulcan, though. Like, if you're gonna do it, that's probably the way to do it. He had Ooh. Vulcan chained up with a bunch of civilians at a banquet, and just with no food. And he oh. would just sit there watching his mortal prisoners die of starvation, and oh. and, and wither away. Uh, oh, he was that's so fucked up. He was trapped in battle plate that he couldn't control. And using oh. his own limbs forced him to slaughter and hunt other loyalist Astartes and other salamanders. Oh. He would have psychers use the ruinous powers to ensnare his mind and make him fight Corvus Corax after a fake rescue attempt. Uh, oh. And have him constantly be put in situations where he couldn't save civilians. Oh, man. Uh, so, uh, does, does Vulcan break? Cause this, this sounds like the perfect cocktail of shit Vulcan don't like being done that uh, he, he's got to break. He's got to bend at not, least a little. Not yet. The wow. now he goes through all those civilians dying and hunting his brothers down and he still ain't broken. So Kurz says to himself, he's like, fuck this. Nothing's working. I'm going to throw you in the maze. 
So he chucked him in the maze in an idea of like dangling freedom in front of him. Right. Where you need to navigate the labyrinth and in the middle of the labyrinth is his personal hammer called Dawnbringer, mm -hmm. which has a teleporter in it. Okay. Um, so this, I mean, this labyrinth, it's, it's impossible. You just, you just can't, you just can't escape it. You, you, you can't. It's just the one where in my head I pictured Vulcan just going, I'm the juggernaut bitch, and just running through the walls. This is the one, yes. Even though he can't, <laughs> even though he can't do that. He can't, but I would just, he's such a big dude, he should be able to. <laughs> so, just... basically, what happened here is that he was about ready to snap, mm -hmm. and then the Emperor kind of was like, no, be, be calm, my son, it's okay, and blah, 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 blah. Um, oh. Emperor, Emperor bullshit to calm yeah. his mind a little bit. And so then Vulcan goaded Kurz yelling about how um, uh, he pitied him because he's just a he's just a frightened child stuck in the dark of Nostromo uh, and how um, it's no like even if you were in my position, no one would have given you any love because you're just truly yeah. a piece of shit. <laughs> he's right, too. I mean. And he's like, even even now in this prison, I am still a stronger man than you are. And so Damn. Kurz was like, all right, talk shit, get, get hit. hit. <laughs> and so he opened up a pathway to where the hammer was, in which the two of them decided to fight in one-on-one -on -one unarmed combat. Oh. Because Volk because Kurz was like, fuck you. All right. <laughs> fuck you. And he and he wants to beat his ass with just his hands. Yeah, but Kurz has got no chance against Vulcan, right? In a in an un, un like in an unarmed combat, Kurz has no chance against Vulcan, does he? As much as I as I love Kurz as a character, you are correct. Uh, Vulcan, <laughs> he's gonna get his ass beat. <laughs> Vulcan, I, I don't think there has been a more embarrassing bodying in 40k. <laughs> nice. Uh, Vulcan <laughs> takes Conrad, as in his actual body. And throws it at the shield that's keeping his hammer <laughs> like <laughs> it's stuck there. You know the force field. He he breaks the shield by taking Conrad himself oh. and throwing him at it. He Hulk smashes Conrad, eh? He he grabs him and he yeets his actual body into oh, the fucking man. force field. What the fuck was Conrad thinking? He's he's super insane right now, remember? Granted, but it's Vulcan, man. He's like he's got to be at least 3 times Conrad's size. He is well known for his prowess in battle. Just look at him. <laughs> like you have no chance. I mean, he's not 3 times the size. He's like the size of Dorn, but you know, like well, you know. okay, he's oh sorry, he's only like twice the size of of Conrad. Sorry, not even that. But yes, he is still much larger. Yeah, he is all big boy. So, Damn. God damn me, it, Conrad, you're such an idiot. You had him. Find, you had insane. him. He's insane. You had him. He's crazy. Now he gets bodied in the most embarrassing way possible because he's. Stupid. Oh, you. Oh, you, you think that's okay? You think that? So he. He yeets him into the force field, grabs his hammer, mm -hmm. and Conrad is like, you uh -oh. know, na natu naturally, uh, here's, here's the quote. Here's the quote, because I have to. Okay. Um, <clears throat> from Conrad. I know Vulcan, he said, having recovered some of his composure. Your beacon won't work. This chamber is teleport shielded. Nothing goes in or out except through that gate behind you. Still trembling with the aftershocks of absorbing the energy field, <laughs> Kurz managed to stand. Did you think you had me broken, brother? Did you believe you have tricked me into letting you escape? He grinned. Hope is cruel, isn't it? Yours was false, Vulcan. Vulcan says, you're right, he conceded, holding up Dawnbringer so he could see it. I fashioned it as a teleporter, a means to escape even a prison such as this. I counted on you leading me here, on you needing to face me one last time. It seems I was fooled into thinking you had it planned for this. Uh, I lower, and then it says, I lowered the weapon, let the weight of its head pull the half down until my hand was wrapped around the very end of the grip. But you're forgetting one thing. Kurz leaned in as if eager to hear my words. He believed that he had had me, that I would never escape his trap. And says, quote, what's that, brother? And Vulcan responds with, it is also a hammer. 
<laughs> and then he and then he the, beats his ass. <laughs> the blow caught him across the chin, a savage oh! upswing that took Kurz off his feet and put him on the ground again with the sheer force of impact. Oh, dear. He got to one knee before I hit him again, <laughs> this time across his left shoulder blade where I split his pauldron in half. Holy shit. And then after that, he was like, bye bye. Blip. Yep. After, I mean, what, once once I heard that from Conrad, I was like, oh, man. I was like, this is this is the part where he gets bitch slapped with a hammer, isn't it? This is the part where Vulcan is just like, dude, I have been waiting to get back at you and just dunks on him. And you can just, you we've all seen a superhero movie where someone gets uppercut and they just go flying into the air. That's Conrad. So at the end of this little fight, um, Vulcan is in a position where he can kill Kurz, and Kurz is like, fucking do it. Fucking do it, loser. Like, kill, <laughs> kill me. Come on, pussy. And Vulcan <laughs> says, quote, I choose to stay behind. I wanted to hurt you, but most of all, I wanted to know I could spare you. We are alike, Conrad, but not like that. Never like that. But if I see you again... I will kill you. And then he teleports Damn. away. Damn. Also, I imagine leaving Conrad alive is a lot worse because now Conrad just has to live with his shame. Well, Conrad also, I think this this also gives him a bit more of his justification because he's oh, like, yeah. once again, I'm alive because yep. I'm going to die by the assassin because this is how fate is and yada yada. Okay. Um, it's more so vindication. Vulcan, yeah. So Vulcan teleports away. And he teleports to the homeworld of the Ultramarines, Macrog. Oh, okay. But he doesn't quite teleport where he wants. Okay. He teleports in the upper atmosphere. Uh oh. <laughs> in which he, uh -oh. Begin, he begins to fall. Uh oh. Well, he survived a nukes. Falling through the atmosphere should be no big deal. You're right. In fact, he burnt to a crisp and died. Oh, well, okay, never mind. I guess it is a pretty big deal. Okay, well, that's... Uh... <laughs> he, he was a meteor. He, he literally respawned on the top, and he slowly got pulled back into the planet. And he's like, oh, no, he starts burning up. He died the way he was born, as a fiery meteor from heaven. Mm-hmm. That's got to be such a fucking... <sighs> that's, that is... That is an immediate uh, twist of fate. It was like, yeah, I got my hammer back. I fucking bodied Conrad. Let's get out of here. Blip. Ah! <laughs> burns to a crisp. It burns to a crisp in the atmosphere. Oh, man, that sucks. And that's is that just the end of him until he respawns again, or...? No, so after that, after oh. <laughs> he, he came back through, um, it was assumed he was dead. Uh -huh. Um, but then, uh, he, he wasn't, he came back alive because of course he did. Sure. Uh, and then, uh, at that period of time afterwards, he was like, this whole part is a little bit difficult for me. There's a lot of shit going on, mm -hmm. uh, here. Like he, he burns to a crisp, but then he wakes up and he's like totally insane. Oh, great. Because insane of the pain. Vulcan. Great. <laughs> because of the one, the Conrad shit, and also because he had to deal with the physical pain of burning to a crisp in upper atmosphere. Yeah, that, yeah, burning, burning alive, burning to death is, that'll probably make you a little insane, sure. Yeah. This yeah. is actually why Conrad came back, um, because, and he hid among the Dark Angels ship playing among us because he wanted <laughs> to get to the surface of Macrog in order to kill Vulcan again. Oh, God. Oh Conrad, just leave it alone, man. <laughs> well, he got he got there. He made it. Yeah. Okay. Remember when when Lionel Johnson was like, "All right, Gilliman, I want to blow up your your planet so I can kill Conrad." And Gilliman's like, "What?" <laughs> That's right. I forgot all about that. <laughs> Gilliman, you what? You what? <laughs> you what? No, you daft idiot. <laughs> so I, I'm going to paraphrase a lot of this shit because this this stuff is really weird. Mm -hmm. It was like Conrad tried to get him and they did fight, I think. And then this this other perpetual guy named John Grammaticus, who was a part of a <laughs> Xenos group called the Cabal, 
stabbed him oh. with this weird glass thing made from the emperor's psychic power and it stabbed Vulcan and killed him what was appeared oh. to be permanently. Oh, okay. That's that's a that's a lot of information to process very quickly. Long story short, he got shanked by this Grammaticus guy with a, a fancy pantsy metal or glass thing and that was supposed to kill him totally. But it didn't. But it, so they put him in his casket and all this stuff. After fighting off a bunch of Death Guard and people, bring him back to Nocturne to Mount Deathfire. And, <laughs> Mount Deathfire. and they, they lowered name. his sarcophagus in the lava, you know, the uh, final thing. But at this per period of time, there was a Salamanders guy known as uh, Artelis Numian who was like, there's no way Vulcan's dead. No way, no how. I don't believe it kind of thing and that's and he was the one who started off the vulcan lives stomp, uh concept stomp stomp, stomp. Uh, gotcha he was the one who first said vulcan lives you know like i he's not dead vulcan lives and i'm not quite sure the logic in this one but he went to mount deathfire himself and decided to kill himself uh uh by oh. by walking into the fire to sacrifice himself to rebirth vulcan uh <laughs> oh Okay. Ba That's basically, good. some other sergeants of the Space Marines got on their jet bikes because they realized he was missing and went to go find him. And they found this figure in the desert, at which they thought was him, but it, it was it was actually Vulcan. And Vulcan they were like, lives. oh my god, Vulcan lives. There he stop, is. Stop. He's alive. Oh my god. And he comes back. He's like, oh my god, Emperor's on the throne. He goes up to Rogel Dorn and he's like, Rogel Dorn, hello. I, I, I'm I going to give you a hug. And Rogel Dorn's like, don't do that. And then he gives him a My hug. My bones. He, then he gives him a hug anyway. And he's like, oh, Rogel. <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm wrapping this up quickly, Vulcan fights a bunch of fucking crazy ass orcs. I think he, he like takes the leader out in a thermonuclear explosion that kills Vulcan. Uh, oh. And now Vulcan is on his respawn timer. Okay. And it is believed by the salamanders that when they discover all of the artifacts from a tome that Vulcan left behind, the he will return to them. Yeah, it sounds more like his perpetualness has made the story of him much more convoluted and unnecessary. I agree. Like, it I, all just sounds like a big, bloated mess of nobody knows what the fuck is going on and we're just making it up as we go. I fucking love Vulcan. He is a, a glimmer of true humility, humanity, and the importance of the civilian life in a world of a never-ending war. But I think mm. the way they handle his story, particularly post-heresy, I'm not a huge fan of. I uh, I agree 100%. As soon as the perpetual shit came into play, it was like, oh, everything just got really stupid i don't mind the perpetual stuff when it came to the conrad torturing yeah because that actually i think solidified the concept of the character like it's not about vulcan's body anymore it's about vulcan's mind yeah. and it's about conrad's mind going crazier like oh that part's interesting yeah um but everything past that i mean i guess it's kind of funny that he burns to a crisp in upper atmosphere of a crock <laughs> <laughs> but um Do you guys but, even, but even so no i i I'm sure there will be a couple people who are upset with me that I'm I'm abridging this so heavily, but I it's really not the important part of Vulcan in my opinion. The important mm -hmm. part about Vulcan is he's a great character with an, a so-so story. Yeah. The thing that makes him really good is just his, his sheer like importance and, and kindness. And his humility and the fact that he isn't like all the other Primarchs where they deem themselves so above everybody. He deems himself an equal. Yeah. He would just as easily sacrifice himself for his battle brothers. Like, the fact that his battle brothers getting murdered all along alongside him during the Dropside Massacre, like, that'll hit him more than it'll hit anybody else. Yeah. And He's also... It, it is. And it, it transfers into the Salamanders as, a, as an army more mm -hmm. so. Like, both on the tabletop... And in lore, the Salamanders have a, a huge emphasis on, on self-sacrifice and in the importance of civilians. They're, I, they're the only Space Marine Legion that actually can remain in touch with their family. Oh. 
Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, Shai said we'll we'll talk about the salamanders and and how that translates them in the, in the next episode. Because oh yeah, that's just a little episode, little oh, tease teaser. Oh you little tease. little tease. Oh you tease you. you little tease. Damn. But we'll talk more about the sallies and stuff and anything that I any. I mean, if the comments have anything that they'd like me to mention in the next one involving oh, Vulcan. I'm sure the comments have nothing know, to say. They're always something... talking about how perfect you are and how you hit every uh, every mark that they want to hear. Listen, You're just, fine. Something, just something, maybe a good quote or something funny, kind of like <laughs> the con where he's like, I heard you do weird things to your warriors, Fulgrim. <laughs> that stuff. Anyway, this is Vulcan. I'm sure Shy is livid angry because she's going to have to edit such a long episode but you know what it's vulcan how am i going to keep this shit under an hour i mean i feel like when the both of you decided hey let's do vulcan and the salamanders shy had to know she was getting into like okay that's that's bricky's thing that's one of his favorite primarchs favorite space marines is going to be a big one yeah, well, sure. yeah, and also I get to talk about Kurs more, which I always like, and we get to uh, talk yeah. about Percherabo launching a nuke at him. <laughs> anywho, so anywho, speaking of nuclear endings, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Adeptus <laughs> right to the chest podcast. Right to the chest. Nuclear warhead, DK, I'm gonna torture you, and when you oh, come no. back, to, and when you come back to life, I'll remind you that anime is not real. Well, I always knew anime wasn't real. That's 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 me hitting you over the head with a hammer. It's like I always knew it wasn't real. Boom! And then you go flying like curse. It's, it's also, it's also a manga. Hits you over the head with the hammer. No! This is stupid. I don't like this anymore. I'm leaving. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm done. <laughs> we'll see you next episode. <laughs>